philosophers love to look into ideas and really question the fundamental principles behind things and look at arguments and why we believe certain kinds of things. Hey, what's going on? Why are you so serious? Um, well, I'm texting my friend Greg. I just saw his girlfriend out with some other guy, so I'm just letting him know that she's cheating on him. What are you, the morality police? Why is it your job to tell exactly what's going on in the situation? Well, he's my friend, so I think he kind of deserves to know. Well, it's going to completely ruin his day. Doesn't he have a big exam later today? Yeah, I guess. Maybe you could wait and tell him in person, like, later at some other time. I suppose. Do you know what's going on, like, for sure? Are you sure you uh, you got the story right and what you saw? Well, I just saw her out with some other guy. I kind of just assumed. You know, people in relationships have different kinds of rules, and it's hard to say what's going on exactly. Don't you have maybe a duty to find out more about the situation? And if you're going to invade her privacy, maybe the least you could do is ask her about it and find out what's going on from her perspective before you create this big thing between them with a text. Maybe I'll just text him a frowny face. So one way that we come to have the beliefs we do is by being rationally convinced of those beliefs. Sometimes we're influenced by other things like what's the most popular idea or who's the most beautiful spokesperson. But at least once in a while, informing beliefs and making judgments, we care about how the reasons stick together and what's the most logical way to proceed. What's the best way to think about something? Philosophy is the study of that, of thinking well. And because of the study of thinking well, we look at lots of different subjects and ask the big questions about those things. Hey, don't you usually eat like a burger for lunch? Yeah, but I'm trying to go vegetarian actually. Really? That's a big change. What's motivating you to do that? Well, I don't know. I just, I'm really attached to my pets and I just feel like it'd be a good thing to do. Yeah, so there's different questions that philosophers ask about what the right thing to do is. And on some analysis of morality, it seems like suffering and, uh, and pleasure are the major things we talk about. And if the whole point of having an ethical existence is to enhance pleasure and minimize suffering, it seems kind of natural to include animals in that perspective because animals can suffer and be happy. But there's this question about what what it means to enhance animals' pleasure. Because the farm animals we see around us, they wouldn't even exist if we weren't interested in raising them for eating them. So it's not like they would necessarily have better lives if we didn't eat meat. So some people feel like we should just insist on ethical and humane practices for rearing animals, maybe cut down on the amount of meat we eat, or expect it to be more expensive because it takes more to care for, or something like that. Um, but a lot of other people think that morality actually isn't totally about suffering and, and pain and pleasure and how to get more pleasure than pain. But it actually has to do with something like agreements between people who care about morality, who are conscious, reflective creatures, so kind of human-specific. And so vegetarians kind of divide into different camps, but some people feel like we should be vegetarians because that's what's best for human beings, and human beings are really the moral focus. And other people feel like we should be vegetarians because our moral focus should really include animals too, and include people like your pets who are, you know, have feelings and and also farm animals as well. Hey, what's up? Uh, not much. I just heard this really cool idea, and when I heard it, I wondered what you would say about it. Okay. It's a thought experiment. Oh, cool. What is it? Um, okay, you have to use your imagination, and think about, um, okay, so imagine you've been given this chance to plug into this machine, and if you do that, your whole mental life will be full of really pleasurable experiences, and you'll have a totally satisfying life with lots of euphoria and good stuff. Um, but when you plug into it, you have to you know, not have a regular conscious life. So no more suffering, but also no more real relationships with people or you know, having a, a, an existence in reality. So do you think it would be rational for somebody to choose to sign on to this life of disconnected pleasure? Would it be a, a kind of really good life to have all of this pleasure even if you weren't connected from other people? What do you think? I don't know. I can kind of see it both ways. Um, it doesn't seem bad to want more pleasure, and it kind of seems like we be plugged into the perfect life. Um, but on the other hand, I think there's something to be said about having real relationships and having real experiences and not, you know, virtual ones. Even if real life is full of pain and sickness and suffering and all that kind of stuff? Hmm. 
I don't know. Philosophy can be really fun. Philosophy is about discussion and about convincing people of things. And this comes up all over in government, when people are defending policies, in law courts, and in boardrooms. Whenever anybody's interested in convincing another person or other people of things, having good reasons and strategies for making themselves clear is a really important skill. If you want to learn how to become a better thinker and have lots of interesting discussions and improve your logic, your ability to listen and make arguments, we hope you find your way to a philosophy department.